do you spend lots of money on these disposable masks only to throw them right in the garbage after one time use? We do have a lot of homemade fabric masks here in my home, but we also buy the throwaway ones. It seems like we go through these masks very quickly, and these are only a one time use on the disposable ones. So why not take the pieces and parts from the disposable mask, salvage those pieces, and make our own fabric pleated mask with the salvaged parts from the disposable masks. And the tutorial starts right now. Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. I am so excited today to show you how I took a throwaway mask that was ready for the garbage, salvaged the pieces and parts, and turned it into this really cute pleated mask. I'm gonna share with you two pleated masks today. One is the basic pleated mask, like the disposable one that you get in these boxes. The second one is a pleated mask that you will be able to put a filter in. Enough talking already. Let's recycle. The first thing you're going to do is find a used disposable mask. I'm sure you have one. Next, we're going to cut off the elastic ear loops on both sides so that we have two. Check to make sure that both ear loops are the same length. Here I had to cut off just a little bit on one side. Set those aside and next we are going to salvage the nose wire that's within the disposable mask. It's really easy. Just find the one end, cut right into it, and cut a little bit down the side and it will expose that wire that's been encased in there all this time. And just pull it out. I didn't show this next part on video because I actually used a brand new mask for this tutorial but go ahead and take some mild soap and warm water and wash the ear loops and the nose piece and make sure they're dried real good. Next, we're going to cut the side pleats so that we can expand this disposable mask so that we can make a template out of it. We want to know how much fabric we actually need and the only way to do that is to deconstruct this mask, just like that. Here you can see that I made a template of the disposable mask that I just deconstructed and I added about a quarter of an inch on the side. My template with the seam allowances measured seven inches in width, that means across, and six inches in height, up and down. After you've made your template, Go ahead and throw out that yucky blue disposable mask right away. We're not using any part of that. Next, you're going to take your template that you just made and cut out two separate pieces of fabric. One can be printed and then another one can be a light color, the one that's going towards your face. And you'll have two pieces of that that you are going to place right sides together. Once right sides are together, go ahead and fold one side back like you see me do. And then we are going to put a spot of the purple stick glue right there on the side of the mask. This is going to tack our ear loop down just before we sew it so it doesn't come away and pull away and mess us up when we take it to the sewing machine. And I'm just going to stick that one piece of ear loop down into that purple glue, being sure to stay away a, a little more than a quarter inch away from that top area and that bottom area. Then I'm just going to put a tiny spot on top of the elastic and then just press the right side of that fabric down into the elastic just so that it adheres momentarily for me and sticks real good. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and do your spot of purple glue on the upper area there and you can see there the measurement, how far I stayed away from the top. And then you're just going to do the same thing. Go ahead and press your ear loop down into that and then you're going to put a spot of the purple glue right on top of that elastic. 
and then you're going to take the right side of the fabric and press it right down into that glue. Next, take some tailor's chalk, or you can put a pin right there too. This tailor's chalk just helps me to remember that I'm not going to sew in this bottom area of the mass because that's where we're going to turn it right side out. In this next step, I'm going to tack down all four ends of the elastica loops where I'm pointing to. I'm going to take those to my sewing machine and do a zigzag on each end to secure it so that it does not pull out. Here's what it looks like when it's all done. There's only a zigzag just on the ends. Now our next step is going to be to change our sewing machine to a straight stitch and then right where I'm pointing around the perimeter of that mask, using a quarter inch seam allowance, sew all the way around, but not that blue area. Are you enjoying my new video on recycling these disposable masks? If you are, please don't hesitate to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so that you know when I upload a video every time. I appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments if you ended up subscribing from this video. Okay, on with the tutorial. Go ahead and cut the corners off of your mask and then turn it right side out. I also use a pokey tool to help me get the corners nice and sharp on my mask. Next, I'm going to put a nice hot press and crease around the entire mask so that everything lays nice and flat. I'm also going to iron a seam allowance in the bottom of the mask right there. You see I tucked it in sort of and laid it nice and flat and gave it a good press so that there's a crease there. Looking good. Next we're going to find the center, the middle top of our mask. And then we're going to fold it over and I put a hot press right in the crease there. I just needed to know where the middle was so that I knew how to evenly put the wire uh, markings on. So go ahead and mark it just like you see me do there on the outside and I'm just making it darker right there. I'm going to sew down across but I'm not going to sew the other end just yet. And this is what it looks like after I've sewn it down and across and I've left that side area open. Next I'm going to go ahead and grab my wire, put it up through the middle area bottom there where the opening is, and then I'm going to go ahead and feed that wire right in that little slot. And it may give you a little fit at first, but it slides right in, trust me. And after you get it in, you're going to go ahead and sew up that other side so that it does not come out. The space of my wire was about a quarter inch uh, pocket in there. Now yours may be different depending on how big your wire is, so take note of that. I tried to make this next part really easy for you guys by putting all of my measurements on this piece of paper. Now the paper is as big as my template was that I made the mask with. Now the first thing you're going to do is fold your paper right in half. Right there is the middle. That is where I folded it right in half. Make sure you put a good crease in there. There are three major lines in this mask template. The middle is one of the major lines. Now up from that middle line, you're going to measure one and a quarter inches up and make a mark. That mark right there, that one and a quarter inches up, that's your next major line of the three. So, so far we have the middle and the top and we need the third one. You're going to go one and a quarter inches down, mark it, that's your third major line. Now we're going to go to the minor lines. From each of those major lines, you are going to measure down three eighths of an inch and you're going to pinch that amount and fold down. There's one right underneath the top line, the middle line, and the bottom line. Those are the only lines you have to worry about. I'll show you here how I folded it down, but those are the exact measurements on my mask. 
Here's a good shot of how it looks when everything is pinched and folded down properly. It looks like an accordion almost. Or one of those fans that you would fold up and fan yourself off with. <laughs> Once you have everything folded like it should be folded, it should look something just like this. Now I like making templates ahead of time and then making what I want to make. That way I have something to follow. Like now what we're going to do is do exactly what we did to that piece of paper, but only this time we're going to do it on the fabric. We're going to find that middle spot first. Remember that is the middle major line. I found it easiest to turn my mask to the back and measure one and a quarter inches up from that middle line and then use my ruler sort of to make the crease to help me follow and go ahead and press it. And then I do the same exact thing with the back of the mask with the middle line, but I'm going in the opposite direction toward the bottom of the mask, measuring a quarter, or I'm sorry, one and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to lift up the mask, see right there and pinch it sort of where my ruler was. And I know that that's where the crease should go. And make sure you use a really hot, steam iron to put a nice crease in these pleats. Now that we have those three major pleats all pressed, it's going to be easy peasy from here on out. Measure down three eighths of an inch with your ruler and then pinch that amount and lay it flat and iron it. Now you're going to do this with every single one of those three major lines, making three minor lines three eighths of an inch down from each major line. I sure do hope that that makes sense to you. It does to me, but I don't know. This is probably the most tedious process in the whole project, but if you just follow the measurements that I've given you, you'll nail it every time, I promise you. And just make sure really that you get a good hot press in these creases. And that's what's gonna give you that nice pleated mask look. Next, we're going to take our pleated mask over to the sewing machine and put two rows of stitches down both sides of this mask. Now you see here, I'm kind of fanning that out a bit. A bit. That is a little trick I use to help contour around the face with these pleated masks. Now your first stitch on this mask is going to go just inside of the seam allowance. And then the second line of stitching is going to be just on the edge. Here I'll show you. But before we do that, let's sew up that bottom area in the mask where we turned it right side out. Go ahead and just put a row of stitches right along the bottom and that will help seal everything up. I'm sorry that my hands are in the way on this next step. I am so sorry. So what I did here was I came in just beyond the bulk of the side of that mask where the seam was. It was a little bit more than a quarter inch probably. Then I sewed down all of the pleats. Now I didn't go all the way to the bottom and I didn't start all the way at the top. Just that middle area is fine, just like that. Now next what I'm going to do is make that next line of stitching right along the edge now on that bulky part. Do this to both sides of the mask. This is what you should have so far when both sides are nicely double stitched. Now take it over to your ironing board and give everything one last hot press, keeping all of those pleats nice and creased. This mask turned out better than I thought it would. Can you believe it? We are now mask recyclers. I like the idea of that. How about you? The filter pocket pleated mask is essentially the same exact methods that we used on the first mask. Now the measurements are different though. You need a 12 and a half inch by seven inch piece of fabric. Just one piece is all you need for this. Now that's the only measurement that is different than the first one. So all of the other measurements, the one and a quarter inch and the three eighths inch major and minor lines, those are all the same. 
take the fabric and fold right sides together just like you see me do here. Now I'm going to take those raw edges and I'm going to pink right across them. Now take it to the sewing machine and only sew about a couple inches on each side of those pinked areas, making sure that there is a space in the middle left where we can turn it right side out. Now we are going to press open that seam that we pinked by pressing it with a hot iron. In the next step, we are going to add in the ear loops. But first, before you do that, you have to make sure that that center seam that we just pressed open is in the center from how it's folded, just like you see how I have it laying here. Refer back to the first mask in this video if you have forgotten how to add the ear loops in with the glue first and then sew them with a zigzag. Every step from here on out is the same as the first mask, so if you forget anything, go ahead and refer back to the first one. But I am going to let this video play so that you can see how it's fully done from start to finish. Here are the two choices that I have for my filters to put in my new pleated mask. The white one is the polypropylene that does not tear and can be washed over and over again. The gray one is the olefin. It's a lot lighter, but it also can be washed over and over again and reused. And both are water repellent. I will put links down in the description box below this video for the olefin and the polypropylene on where you can purchase those two filters. 
This mask is ready for a filter. All you have to do is turn it to the back, open up that seam allowance area with your fingers and just slide the filter up in there. Easy peasy. I sure hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.